Hello, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And we need to talk. We'll be talking about a lot of things that the people today seem to do mindlessly and they seem to not care. And then they turn around and talk about the environment and they talk about, you know, decency and they talk about this and they talk about that, not realizing that everybody today is actually most of the people anyway today are actually directly or indirectly involved in all that is going wrong first of all the palestinian israel issue which i have kept on and on talking about the pakistan issue the colonization issue the kashmir issue the fact that europe and america you know that they are still stealing and looting and plundering from those countries that they colonized because those countries are still very very rich uh, resource resource wise and they're rich mineral wise they are rich generally actually and they're forced to be you know living in poverty or in division or in conflict because it suits the purposes and the fact that the European and American public are so brainwashed and so indoctrined that they keep on and on thinking that, oh, we know everything. Oh, we, we are free. We're, you're not free. You're slaves of your own government. You're slaves of your own government's delusions and illusions that they have been putting you <clears throat> into, um, you know, for decades. That is why you keep on and on repeating the same bloody mistakes year in, year out. And you always seem to very conveniently wake up once the damage is done just to apologize. And I've warned everybody already that this time an apologize will not cut it, okay? And apologizing as in an apology will not cut it, okay? So this time you will have to pay the price. This time this war is literally you courting your own demise, okay? Now let's move on to other stuff. Um... Let's talk about consumerism. Everybody is screaming about consumerism and yet we have got these weak-minded people who seem to follow influences. And mind you, these influences <clears throat> are called influences for a reason. And like everything else, they started on a genuine scale. They made a name for themselves and they were influencers. But now, you know, anybody and everybody can be an influencer as long as, you know, a brand... Uh, attaches itself to them or you know gives them an offer to do to to just be sponsored or you know to become a brand ambassador or to you know just you think I never did got it why do you think I do not have a, a huge growth of following on my social media because as, when it comes to metaverse especially um, metaverse deliberately manipulates and controls the amount of viewership that your stuff gets i mean the look how how i mean how worse can it be how more pathetic can it be when your facebook which was originally supposed to be a place where you could connect with friends suddenly became a place where out of all your friends only 10% get to see what you are posting on your wall and you know you have to now boost your posts and make you know uh, make a commercialized effort you know turn your facebook page into a commerce in order to get the full views so and then obviously they've done the same thing with instagram so and they keep on and on tightening you know um, it on the algorithm they keep on they keep on and on forcing you that literally, literally, now even less than 10% people actually have access to whatever it is that you're showcasing or displaying or posting or uploading on your metaverse. So that in itself it shows, you know, how the people who thought that social media was one place where they will not be able to be controlled is where they are actually being 100% fully controlled yet again. If nothing else, then by the owners of set social media platforms. Um, similarly, you know, when everybody was singing praises of Elon Musk, I was like, yeah, well, wait till things happen and then you'll find out. Because let me tell you one thing, to talk the talk is very easy, but to actually walk the walk, that is what you need to see. Actions speak louder than words, okay? 
Your actions are what actually tell you where it is that you're headed and what exactly it is that you have on the agenda. So, yeah, that is why, you know, in social media, I do not artificially boost my posts. I do not buy my uh, viewers because I have never accepted any brands and mind you brands have they have come to me from different parts of the world and I have never accepted them because I've got better things to do in life number one social media is not my uh, you know be all end all I'm only forced into it because as a writer you know um, people keep saying that the, that you know especially readers who have read my books, they specifically make that effort to call me or to message me or to, you know, contact me and tell me that, you know, we, we got your books and we loved it and we don't understand why you're not advertising it. Well, apart from the metaverse algorithm, there's obviously the, um, you know, the Amazon algorithm and its control where many people from different countries actually do not have access to the Amazon ad tools, and I'm one of them. So together with that, you have the, you know, again, the government, you can see the hand of the government, the American government behind Amazon as well, where any book or any writer that seems to stray from the narrative that they're trying to brainwash their people with, you know, that you will not see those books easily. They do not show up on the algorithm. You have to go and specifically search for them to find them. This is, again, something I've talked about as a writer, you know. And then now, consumerism, again, on another level. You know, we talk about how uh, fast fashion and, you know, and it's amazing how whenever people talk about fast fashion, I've noticed, again, another subtle or not so subtle for me, um, indoctrinization going on where they keep on and on, you know, um, focusing and targeting on China, um, you know, about forced labor and this and that. You are the people who have been attacking Muslims um, after creating that false flag drama of 9-11 and you're still attacking Muslims, mainly because, unfortunately for you, uh, most of the Muslim countries are the ones that are richest in resources, in gold, and in other minerals. And you just want that. And so you decided to just put it on a platter there and put, you know, put the whole world into an Islamic, Islamophobic mode. And... When you've got to that point where you are now trying to brainwash your people against Muslims, the same Muslims whose laws you're using, whose system you're using to build yourselves, um, you know, who's uh, basically the whole social welfare system that you've got running is again based off of the Islamic system. So you've basically stolen everything from the Islamic system. You've borrowed it, you've stolen it, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, you're using it. And then you're telling your people to go against that very system and go against the people whose system you stole. You know, and, and then you're like talking about China and then when they ha you had the communism thing going on and you suddenly brought God into the picture. So it's amazing how you bring God into the picture when it suits you. And then you go against God and his believers, you know, a.k.a. Islamophobia, when it doesn't suit you so yeah i don't get that and i think anybody with a mind with a brain will immediately question that but to see that we've got so many people who actually cannot be bothered and that is the essence it's not that people are so stupid that they don't know what's going on is that people do not want to know what's going on they don't want to get involved well you know today it's happening to other people Tomorrow it will happen to you. And by the time it happens to you, there will be nobody there raising their voice for you. First of all, number one, because there will probably be nobody left to help you. And number two, even if there are people there, they will also think that you deserve exactly what you're getting. You know, that karma is a bitch, you know, and you deserve it. So instead of targeting China, you know, like paranoid idiots, you know, incompetent, paranoid idiots, um, you know, uh, and remember that Pakistan was one of those countries, Imran Khan was one of those people who worked with China and with other neighboring countries in order to stop trading 
in dollars and to start trading in local currency. And that is how, despite the fact that you removed Imran Khan, but China continued with that. And so now China is trading in its yen and it has increased yen to another platform. Again, remember way before that, it was Gaddafi. It was Gaddafi who started this, who wanted that they should trade in their own currency. In his case, he preferred that because gold was much more easier to trade with in Africa. So um, he decided that, you know, let's just use gold once again as, you know, the age old tradition. And that is when China started digging for gold in Pakistan, you know, the Rikudik uh, case. And um, again, you know, so people started, you know, taking steps towards that because it made sense to them. But America and Britain, because it did not make sense to them and they saw, saw that they would be at a loss, they killed Gaddafi. They killed Gaddafi, now they removed Imran Khan, and now they're after China. I mean, just look at it. Look at where you're going. Um, and you're talking about how other people are brainwashed. Nobody in the world is as brainwashed. In fact, nobody in the world is brainwashed, except for the European and the American, the Canadian, the Australian people. Why? Because they are sheep that just don't know what's what, and they haven't learned through their history. They haven't learned, you know, uh, their lesson from the recent events and incidents as well you know and so you now you're attacking fast fashion and you're attacking you know chinese a labor that you know that china is uh oh is committing to s slave slavery you know that they're using the muslim communities in china as slaves um you know and excuse me what are you doing to the muslim community do you actually think you have the right to target china using the Muslims, when you are the ones who have been blatantly attacking the Muslims, left, right and center. So yeah, it's going to be hard for the Muslims to actually believe, first of all. Again, see, that's the point, is that if it's coming from America's mouth, the world does not believe it. I mean, America might have given its people the illusion that any news, any narrative that comes out of America's mouth or British mouth, you know, it is supposed to be accepted because it is the idea there is that you know they will not say anything without proof or evidence or investigation but no actually the world generally has a healthy mistrust and distrust towards whatever narrative flows out of the american mouth or the british mouth so when you talk about because we've seen what you did with the, with the afghanistan with iraq with you know uh with the communist countries we've seen whatever you're doing with our countries so yes i'm sorry there is a healthy mistrust and distrust um, for anything that comes out of the american and british mouth with regards to any other country um, and their dealings with any minorities. We need an actual proof. And we do not even accept the United Nations again, because as you can see very clearly, this is something I've been talking about for years, but now you can, now everybody can see it very openly that the United Nations is literally just a puppet in the American hands, you know, and it's a parrot that will just repeat whatever it is that the Americans say. So again, there is no a viable, uh, you know, evidence to prove that whatever they're saying about China is true. But obviously, the minute we'll find out that China is indeed, uh, you know, torturing or, you know, enslaving or uh, misbehaving with its Muslim communities, then obviously the Muslim world will turn against China just like that in a flash. But again, notice the Muslim community has not yet turned against Israel in a flash. What do you expect them to do with China? Okay, so here's the other ironic stuff here. Because again, the leaders in the Muslim world are not even, very few Muslim countries have their own genuinely mandated leader. Okay, most of them are again planted fifth columnists and traitors um, who are not even Muslims, you know, if you go right into it. And they're just planted traitors and fifth columnists who are working for foreign entities that are working against their own countries. So there you are. So, I mean, you know, before attacking Xi'an and before attacking, you know, um, the Chinese um, methodology of doing business, you need to look 
right at your own door. The Americans have violated a lot of laws, international and domestic. The Americans have gone over to other countries and done the same thing. They violated our country's laws. They have uh, not paid their taxes in our countries. They have, you know, violated, um, you know, a lot of our rules. And where do they go? You know, they just went scot-free. So, yeah, don't talk to us about how, you know, China is basically a giant. You are fearful of your loss in the world, your loss of control, and you just want to once again brainwash your people. It's so pathetic when I look at the Americans um, saying, oh, you know what, we've decided to delete the app of, you know, so-and-so Chinese website because, you know, we found out that they're spying on us. Your own government is spying on you. Have you forgotten the AT&T? You know, have you forgotten Metaverse? Have you forgotten? They're all Americans. These are all American companies. These are all American organizations. These are all American platforms. And they're not just spying on the American people. They are actually illegally. They have the gall to spy on all their consumers from all over the world. Okay? So don't talk to us about how a Chinese website, you know, is spying on you, so you've decided to delete it, you know. And I'm talking about Timu here. So because Timu actually went so huge in a short span of time that it literally beat Amazon down, um, so the American government went in a frenzy. And, you know, they, they just, I mean, so much for your fair trade laws. This is, again, something I've talked about a long time ago when I was very skeptic about American and British uh, move on fair trade because this is not fair trade if you want that the whole world should take anything and everything from you but you start restricting other people you know because um, oh they might be grow up grow and be better and they might you know um, basically overshadow your own companies or your own countries or your own finances so yeah, I think that is absolutely pathetic. It shows how childish and immature you are as countries and it actually shows your agenda, you know. So yeah, so much for free trade when you're constantly putting restrictions on Chinese retailers, on Chinese platforms, on Chinese trade, left, right and center, just because, you know, you're panicking about your own locally grown pigs and your own locally, uh, you know, ma manufactured plants of products or whatever it is that you people are crying on about. So you know, I mean, I think you should take a good hard look at yourselves first, you know, and recognize the fact that you are the villains here, okay? You're not the heroes, you're the villains. And the whole world, the global story, you know, and the global narrative, America and Europe are the villains. They're the thieves, you know, they're the pirates, they're the parasites that won't let go. You know, they're the plagiarists and they are, you know, basically the mafia. So don't go around, you know, talking about how China and its labors and its laws and its this and its that. Go and look at your own companies and what they're doing in different countries all over the world. And now, coming back to influencers again, uh, what is this thing about this, this new fangled tradition that you people are trying to start? I mean, you've already started it. It started years ago, I guess. Where you people seem to think that it's okay, you know, to wait in line for hours and hours in front of a restaurant or a hotel because, you know, it, it is the, one of the best and worst. I'm sorry, but do you actually think that people should be waiting in line just to get their lunch? you know, or just to get some food. Because obviously when people are out there food hunting, they're doing it because they're hungry, you know. And to create, I mean, I know that in Korea, this trend really, really took off. And I, I don't know if Korea is the one that is influencing other countries to do that or, you know, if they're just showing that this has become a norm. But this is not something that anybody with, with any common sense would even do. Like, do you honestly think that you will stand in line in front of a restaurant just to taste this dish because it's so famous? No, I'm not. I mean, sorry. Anyone, again, with some common sense will not. So, I mean, if you're thinking that you're hyping up the restaurant or, you know, if the restaurant thinks that, you know, oh, people are standing in line for hours and all. But no, this is, again, something that in the past, restaurants 
and hotels had realized which is why they used to open up different branch here and there and you know because they knew that in the long run this is harmful to their business if people have to wait for the service it means you will end up losing a large chunk of your customers so if you're trying to now think that oh because you know a few restaurants are so popular that even though they have not you know made new branches and everything and maybe they're small old restaurants so people don't mind waiting in line yes but that is again something different again that is that is the difference between organic and inorganic popularity okay organic popularity yes even in pakistan some of the oldest uh, you know uh, restaurants or takeaways you know um, they are they are literally you know you see people standing there in line right from dawn so that they can come and get you know the freshest but you know what um people don't go empty handed you know unlike these other new fangled restaurants that you see where people talk about you know especially in korea i've noticed there are these places where maybe again again you see in korea it might be something that is part of their you know um it's not it's organic it's probably not just a hype created maybe there are you know certain restaurants with after all they have a time limit that from this time to this time we can serve and then after that you run out of the ingredients you run out of the food and so you have to you know close the shop and you leave people hanging right um in pakistan this does not happen in pakistan if they see that people keep on coming they will keep on and on you know until they actually until is the actual closing time of the shop and this has always been the tradition here so yes there are places where people stand in line of their own accord of their own volition just because they want to take that thing and they know they can get the best of it at a certain place but this is something different this which you see that you have these people these influencers and these other people you know standing in line waiting for hours in front of a restaurant just so that they can get a seat so that they can get to eat whatever it is that the restaurant is famous for i'm sorry on a daily life basis i'm talking about daily life basis like this where you know that you have a deadline and you know that your lunch hour is literally an hour nobody in their right mind would go and stand for hours in front of a restaurant just so that they can eat or they can find out all of a sudden that oh the restaurant's closing because all the ingredients are finished and the food cannot be served and so you know a hundred more people that were standing in line for four hours now have to go somewhere else to look for something to eat again as i said that is the time when people are actually hungry and they're looking for something to eat so to create that situation is bad business okay and to encourage them to wait in line like that is bad business okay so i mean i think again this is one of those consumerism two bit half bit thing that's going on in the influencer uh, story lines you know you know it's like you know uh, remember one thing a lot of these influencers right now especially they are not organic and even those who are organic now have started picking on more of the business side the aspects of it obviously because now they're earning money and they will obviously want to make more so that they, this youtube could be their prime source of income but again remember youtube also has a short life span when youtube began and people were having fun with it that was something else but now youtube is once again a politicized platform which means that it is under american government and it is under other governments and so it was it is now like metaverse it is bowing down to governments and their censorships and so youtube is no longer fun it's no longer free and obviously now people will be pulling it out right obviously there is that category of people who are pulling out because they have earned as much as they could from youtube and now they feel that they can retire from it and then there are those people who have already realized that youtube has no real future left and that because again it takes years you know it takes years to organically actually gather all that viewership all these people now who are such big influencers on youtube for example if you notice these are people who started years and years ago 11 years ago 15 years ago 10 years ago but those who started barely 3 4 years ago and have got millions of subscribers you can understand that that is not purely organic it's never it's never organic it cannot be organic and then you realize that in many cases many of these influencers actually belong to agencies you know who 
make sure that they get a certain amount of following and viewership and everything within a certain amount of days or within a certain amount of months and then you know they build on their influencership because it is pure business and this is something that you will find very actively uh, going on in China in Korea and in America and in Europe they try to hide it but actually it is going on just as much there and in all the countries all over the world so you need it's just that other countries are always trying to hide it but the you know Koreans have highlighted this that look this actually is going on and this happens so remember that the influencers are not influencers in an organic way they are created they are made overnight okay and it is their job it's like literally just literally it is you know shifting from you know tv shopping to social media online shopping literally it's like that okay if you look if you look at the whole script that they're following it's literally as if you know they're following they're coming from that place you know where you remember where late night tv you would turn on the tv and you would have all these you know um online shopping thing going on where on the tv they're showing you these ads these products and you know um then you call them and you order the product literally that format you can see is somehow or the other being followed through these influencers so their job is to bring a product to you it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter if it is the you know letter scam which came out to be the you know um the it's it's another form of mlm you know uh when it comes out to be that you're actually gambling you know it's and you're not even getting any money but you're getting gambling credits but they keep on and on talking about how you just write these letters and get five dollars per letter it's a total scam so you can see that so that is what the influencers now are actually doing these alleged influencers again Again, I would say because these are not uh, there's a difference between those who organically became influencers and those who overnight became influencers using using money okay and using artificial superficial methods to gain following so those who do not do these things obviously will have a hard time gaining followers they will have a hard time gaining views even because those influencers or those people who are working with agents behind them they literally they their stuff gets pushed and it literally gets shoved into your faces day in and day out because there is actually somebody working the algorithm behind the scenes you know so it's deliberate and it's inorganic it's not organic it's not natural so you know i think that you are actually displaying how weak minded you are as people and that again is something that should serve to make you realize that yes look you because you've already always been brainwashed by your governments and your you know your system that at the end of the day it's so easy to brainwash you just even by the help of an influencer i mean seriously who in their right mind would listen to somebody they don't even know and you know follow them and say oh i want this and i want that i'm sorry but i have never had that i want this i want that moment i just look at some of these people and i see what they're doing and i'm like okay you do you you know i touch wood touch wood mashallah mashallah I have never been influenced by anybody in my entire life as it is anyway but i am very surprised when i see that people literally do get influenced so easily and so quickly it is surprising even when people get influenced by me so quickly and so easily to me i find that very alarming my first question is are they just you know acting you know are they pretending are they just you know overreacting are they just overdoing it what exactly do they want and then my second question when i realize that they are actually genuinely you know following me or you know getting influenced by something i've said or done then i find that very alarming because the last thing that i want is to manipulate somebody's manipulate their thoughts manipulate the way of thinking manipulate their mindset that is the last thing that i want to do so you know and when i realized this a very long time ago as a teenager when i realized that somehow or the other i can very easily influence people and actually influence them to this extent where they literally think that whatever it is i'm saying to them is something that they have already thought themselves and they're acting upon their own thoughts 
and in fact it goes to this extent where they will not even believe anybody if somebody says or even me if me i myself if i tell them that actually i'm the one who told you to do this they will not believe it so the fact that this much power to have this much power to influence somebody to this degree where they literally think that they are the ones thinking of it themselves and they literally you know think that they are independently of their own volition doing that thing that is very alarming okay and i started backing off from this a very long time ago and that is why i became actually more and more um less and less uh, communicative and more and more blunt because the last thing that i want is to influence people to do something that they might not want to do but yes uh i guess to one good use that i can put to this um is to wake the people up yes maybe i can influence people to wake the frack up you know to snap out of it because seriously people seriously i cannot believe that people have such weak minds that they can follow anybody anybody you know just because that person is telling them oh you know korean beauty standards are today's latest standards now everybody wants to go and get korean beauty skin care and all do you okay again use your mind use your brain do you know why the korean skin care is allegedly very popular all of a sudden well it's all not just because of the k-pop culture and and the k-dramas and all um you know it's it's because in their k-dramas and in their k-pop culture you know they have been constantly obviously being sponsored by these products anybody in the entertainment industry is always sponsored by obviously re- re- you know related products and because you're now watching you're now exposed to the korean media basically by watching all the dramas and the movies and all and so you get a hint you know you get to see their products which are being you know which are sponsoring those dramas and those um you know idols and those films and those shows and then you know when you get a peek of it and you you know somebody tests it and tries it and they're like oh yeah you know this is something and then you know obviously the korean beauty industry is pushing it for you know they've realized that their dramas their idols and all have gone international and obviously now they will be riding the wave too which is fine but again now let me let me once again put it this way do you know why people who do genuinely even like these products like them because they think that they are going back to the organic products now turn back just turn back and go back to the indian pakistani and bangladeshi skin care routine and then you will realize that we have been doing most of these things using natural products as teenagers and young adults we have spent most of our time using again organic means you know in our skin care routine and so what's new and anybody with common sense would think that okay since they claim to be organic and they're using rice flour and they're using you know grains and they're using snails and they're using this and they're using that hang on we've been using all of our own organic stuff for our skin care we just left them because it was so difficult to do we decided to, that if we can get something in a bottle we, you know why we might as well use it but that something in a bottle came out to be synthesized and chemicals and so obviously now we want to go back to our roots and basics but we wish we could get those roots and basics in a bottle again in pakistan local skin care products you do get organic again now you might not trust it but then what makes you think you can trust the korean products what makes you think that any product all over the world that claims to be organic is actually 100% organic you do realize that to mass produce something at such a scale to deliver both nationally and internationally you cannot be 100% organic it cannot you can make a foundation an organic foundation out of it but once again you still have to go through the whole synthesizing process in order to make it viable in order to make it that it shouldn't spoil for example you know 
you have to preserve the matter so that it can last you a year or two at least. So these are the things that when you, again, and again, you cannot say that this is something people are unaware, about, unaware of or unaware about because this is something, again, that the same social media has certain other influencers that have been trying to educate people on this, you know, on how many platforms all over the world claim American, European, it doesn't matter which country, but, you know, and this is, again, something that even you, this is for the new generation that is all social media oriented. So for them, they are getting that information there. For our generation, you know, we didn't even need the social media to tell us all of this because we already kind of knew all of this because this was something that came out in our time, you know, which is why we wanted to go back to basics. Now, going back to basics again, so you think that you will go back to Korean skincare and you'll go back to basics. Any person, again, who has a common sense will say, hang on, if I have to go back to basics, why don't I just pluck the aloe vera from my own garden and, you know, uh, use the flower that's in my store, you know, and just do my own skincare routine. And it will cost you zero. But you want to go and spend thousands of rupees or dollars on skincare products because they claim to be organic and they claim to give you that, you know, experience that you would get with organic stuff. So, again, why do you have that much money to throw? You might as well put that money somewhere. If you, ha if you indeed have so much money to throw around, you can put it somewhere where it actually counts. For example, start saving. You know, if you don't want to save, give it to some, you know, some place where it actually gets its worth, you know, buy something that's actually worthy or donate towards charity. Although again, when it comes to charities, that is, there is a question then that I keep on asking, and I've been asking for at least a decade now, if not more, there are so many charities in the world, there are huge charity organizations in the world, and they always seem to need more money for a project that seems to have been going on for decades. All these charities in the world, and yet not a single project seems to have been accomplished or finished. You know, you know, there is still, you know, oh, feed the hungry in Africa. And there is still, and mind you, Africa is a very, very rich continent. So where's all that money going? Are you really, really taking that money to the conflicted zones in Africa, number one. And then, you know, you have this other um, charity where you start that, oh, there's a conflict here, there's a conflict there, we need money. For Has that conflict been resolved? Where's all that money going? So again, to be able to identify a proper organization and to see exactly where that money is going is a lot of headache, which is why then people just, you know, they just donate and they hope to God that it goes where it's supposed to go. So in the name of charity, you have all these organizations and yet the work never seems to have been accomplished. Every year they ask for a lot of money for the same work and decades pass. And it makes you wonder, again, all these huge charity organizations, then why is the world still in chaos? Why is the world still in pain? Why are those missions still unaccomplished? You know, it makes you wonder. So if all these things actually makes one wonder and then one dis decides that, oh, it's, it's not worth it, I think we cannot just go through this whole thing all over again. Uh, you know, so let's just, you know, deliberately close our eyes, dig a hole, put our head in and pretend it's all not there. I understand that. I really do. I understand that. But I do think that... As human beings, we have a responsibility to at least do as much as we can. We don't have to go all out and investigate charity organizations and, you know, become ambassadors of global frontiers. No, I think what we need to do at least is whatever we can in our capacity. For example, don't get easily influenced by people and their stupid videos or stupid notions. Use your brains. Number two, buy something if you truly, truly, truly like it, want it, or need it, okay? Regardless of whoever is asking you to buy that thing. Number three, try to wake up. 
try to wake up out of your slumber and see what's going on around you. Number four, do not add to the consumerism drama. In fact, work actively to reduce it. Buy things that are actually sustainable. In the name of sustainability, I am seeing people using recycled synthetic products. I'm sorry, that to me is not sustainability. To me, sustainability is what people in the name of you know, uh, animal rights and in the name of vegan voices, you know, have actually created a whole new problem. Because again, if you used your common sense, you would realize that no matter what you do, animals are going to be killed and eaten. There are two things we can actually do. Number one, make sure that those animals are actually getting good living conditions and, you know, that they are actually in good breeding grounds and they're healthy, and they're fed organic food, you know, just to save money, you know, uh, again, in the name of profits, companies that deal with poultry or cattle, when they start manipulating the diet of the animals, or when they start injecting them with hormones, and when they start artificially fattening cattle and poultry or when they do anything that is inorganic to their you know uh, to their the animals under their care in the name of profits and business yeah that that is all wrong in every sense you know it's wrong that is where you need to stick up for animal rights and say what the hell are you people doing right if you've got to breed them you'll know that okay these are these are stock that are needed people you know do eat them no matter what you do people all over the world are going to eat them least you can do is to work on their living conditions number one and then number two number two you need to ensure that all that leather that is being produced all that hide you know like in the old times, now in the old times, which I don't know why all of a sudden the 90s have also become vintage in old times. But anyway, in the old times, what people have done right from the beginning or, you know, the dawn of civilization, you can say. And by civilization, I don't mean your modern alleged civilization. I'm talking about right from the beginning of, you know, mankind. Mankind has always been very responsible. It is, it is our civilization that has been highly irresponsible towards the earth. But otherwise, right from the beginning of mankind, mankind has always been very, very, very uh, careful, very responsible towards the environment in that they have used every single thing that they have consumed to its full potential. They used animal hide in every way possible that is called sustainability that is called durability that is called environmentally friendly by the way now discarding people's disc i mean you know leather is always going to be produced in large quantity forcing people to discard that leather and go for vegan leather just because you know it doesn't suit your snobbish attitude regarding um animal hide that is actually very irresponsible. Why? Number one, vegan leather is not real leather, so it doesn't last. It doesn't last, which means you will throw that bag after two years and go hunting for a new bag. So what have you done? You've created a mountain of bags that are added to the trash of already tons of clothes. Tons of clothes that can literally be seen from space. So you have clothes, shoes and bags that are literally adding to the bulk of the world trash and then you're talking about sustainability, durability and you're talking about environmentally friendly. If this isn't hypocritical and stupid and moronic, I don't know what is, okay? The fact is to make do with what is already being there, what is already being, what, what already exists, that is sustainability. Animals will always be consumed like it or not now consuming those animals to their full potential in order to minimize waste that is being environmentally friendly and that is being sustainable that is being durable leather is durable leather lasts you 
years, decades, our pure leather products that we own have not spoiled in literally three decades, four decades, five decades. They are exactly as they are. So why would I want to go for artificial Rexine leather or vegan leather that is not going to last me six months, a year at best, and then be forced to throw them away and look for a new bag? First of all, why do I want to have too many bags? I don't know. Fine, you want to feed your fashionista, then, but then, you know, again, be more responsible. Then don't blame. Don't blame those people who are actually being more durable, more sustainable than you are. You don't go and talk about the environment when you don't even know what you're talking about because you're accumulating all this stuff that is at the end going to add to the trash. That trash, which is a pile of clothes that can already be seen from space. So now you're going to add to that trash and you're talking about plastic, but you think that it's a viable idea to reuse and recycle that plastic in the form of clothes? Yeah, I don't think so. First of all, there is a reason why we're always looking for breathable organic fabric. Now you may say that the production of cotton is not uh, environmentally friendly and you know, okay, instead of going for something that is artificial and synthetic and cannot even be worn, why not try to look for a way to make the production of cotton more environmentally friendly? Because anything that comes from the earth, I'm sure has a very environmentally healthy, safe and friendly way to be consumed. You understand? This is my belief. My belief is anything that is organic, anything that comes from the earth can be organically put back into the earth. It can be manufactured, it can be processed, it can be done in a very environmentally friendly way. It depends on us. So instead of wasting time producing more crap, we should in fact invest our time and money into finding out the different alternatives through which we can manufacture, process, and sustain products that come from the earth, like cotton, like bamboo, you know, like rice, like wheat. You know, instead of genetically meddling with them, why not look for a good way to process them, you know, and then we can deal with the environment as well it's because i think what comes out of the earth is something that can go back into the earth if not meddled with so much so instead of meddling with organic stuff natural grown stuff why not focus on handling them in a much nicer much more healthier much more environmentally friendly way rather than going and producing synthetic stuff plastic stuff that literally cannot be consumed forever. So when you talk about fast fashion and you blame China and all, but actually you shouldn't blame China. The first person that you should blame is your own self uh, because it all began with Zara, for example, and then it began with your own companies where you started making blends to offer cheaper stuff, you know, and then that stuff doesn't last long and it doesn't last long and so, you know, you have to end up throwing it. Compared to in the 90s and the early 2000s, when we actually had very good stuff, so we slowly bought our stuff. We didn't just waste all our money. And we still have the stuff, by the way. I still have clothes that I wore in college. And they're exactly the way they are now, as they were when I bought them. And I can still wear them and I still do wear them because guess what? Fashion recycles, fashion repeats. So I have all those fashions, you know, all those fashion clothing, all those fashionable cuts, all those stylish cuts in my wardrobe already. I don't need to go and buy them over and over again according to the new season because guess what? I already have all of them and I wear them because the stuff, the fabric is good. The, the, they, these are what we call 
everlasting you know these are what we call you know forever so these are forever in fashion and they will never go out of fashion neither the fabric nor the cuts nor the make not the style and that is what we do you know this is how we maintain responsible fashion okay this is how you can have a responsible and at the same time stylish life and the one thing i hate the most is when i end up with a bag or a shoe that flakes on me in a matter of months so i've literally stopped buying bags and shoes because the bags and shoes that i had before again have lasted me decades and i can still use them i can still wear them why would i want to go and buy a new bag and a new shoe that's not going to last me you know a year maximum 2 years why it's not like they're actually cheap i mean if you if you again look at this look at it this way if you actually look at the at the long term or short term value of it it's expensive you're not buying cheaper clothing or cheaper shoes or cheaper fashion tools or whatever it is or bags you're actually spending more money for less value so you are not getting cheaper stuff you are actually getting more expensive stuff because they're not going to last you something is cheaper if it lasts you so you wouldn't mind paying a certain amount of money for it and mind you we all look for cheap stuff none of us want to spend a huge amount of money on something it doesn't matter how long lasting it is i get that but none of us want to spend money on something that doesn't last at all either it's common sense so to create this hype this whole tiktok you know um instagram sort of hype where you know you're bringing rubbish to people and saying oh you know look this is the new hype and even more surprising and and alarming are people who are following it like a herd of sheep that is very very alarming so i will come up with uh, a few more stuff that you know are something that are painful to me and this has already gone too long i was actually hoping to just you know bullet through three four things but uh ended up you know talking about two main things so inshallah next time you know um i will again put together all a list of other things that i feel that people need to you know sit down and think about and stop doing so i hope people can literally think about this and see what exactly is going wrong here with today's world and i hope it helps many of us many of those especially who seem to feel that they are addicted to shopping and all you don't get addicted so easily until you allow yourselves to get addicted keep that in mind too i think it's not a good thing to accept the fact that your de- desires and temptations are there to be fulfilled now this i understand where this thought came from but like every other thought this has got twisted very badly when we used to tell people that you know you live only once so do what you want we did not mean succumb to all your desires and temptations and just go the hell all out and do whatever it is regardless of everything that's going on around you or regardless of the repercussions no what we meant was do not allow people to dominate you force you and influence you against doing what it is that you want to do this is me signing out for the half is